Hi, sir. Hello, Amy. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. So how is your mathematics going on? Um, yeah, good. I've uh, been getting a few, like doing a lot because um, of this Christmas break, trying to catch up on everything um, I kind of didn't get throughout the first term. Um, so doing a lot of stats, um, box and whisker diagrams, frequency, cumulative frequency, things like that. Great. Just still trying to get my head around. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you and a lot of happiness and joy for your family. Thank you so much, sir. You too. Thank you. Your wife yeah, not much to do though. Your coat reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold. The heating it's is cold. gone in my house. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh my God. It is not snowing though, right? Yeah. No, it's not. It was, but then it hasn't settled. It so um, okay. yeah, not like Canada. Yeah. I like saw the Canada, snow. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> we had a lot yeah. of snow. It was fun actually. Right. <laughs> I really enjoyed the snow. They make snowman and all. It was great fun. Yeah. Okay. So today I thought I looked into what you were doing. And most of the things I think you can figure out. However, there is one particular topic when we talk about uh, box and whisker plots, where uh, we are working with a group data. When a discrete data is given to you, you know each and every value. Since you know each and every value, you can find what is the lowest value, what is the highest value, and you can figure out all the quartiles, right? Q1, Q2, right. Q3. Q2 is also referred to as mean, correct? Median, mm -hmm. median. So the first quartile, median, the second quartile, and the third quartile, you can easily calculate from the data. However, if I give you data, which is a group data, within intervals, the frequency, in that case, what is the minimum value? You cannot find because you know the lowest interval, but you don't know exactly which value to pick. Similarly, you also don't know right. what is the highest value. Now that is always an ambiguity. However, we have a method of estimating these values. We also have a method and even a formula to estimate the first quartile, second quartile, and third quartile, right? So today I want to actually discuss with you, how should we work with this group data Logically, how can we find the value for each quartile and then develop a formula from that logic, use that formula to find Q1, Q2, and Q3. So, and this is normally not referred or given in any book. Therefore, uh, it is a very good exercise to work with. All right. You also appreciate that globally, different methods are followed to calculate these things, however, the formula which we are going to derive should work for each and every student all around the globe. Right, so oh, right. yeah. So let me share with you uh, yeah. the lesson which we have prepared for you. And I hope many students around the globe will benefit from it. So basically today, we are going to talk about box and whisker plots with continuous data, right? So that is the key, with continuous data, right? So what I've done here is that I've taken a table that shows length of Atlantic Salmos. In many of my examples, I've taken this data since I really don't want to type much, oh so I just copy and paste. <laughs> but you know, it's good to work with similar kind of information. You can actually compare what we had got the results earlier and how we are working it out now. And it gives you an idea how different the values or how similar the values are, correct? So again, I've taken yeah. a group starting with 60, um, ending with 75, divided into a couple of intervals. Each interval is of 2.5. So when I say 60 to 62.5, I really mean that the length of the fish is greater than or equal to 60, but less than 62.5. That is what it means here, right? So when I say 60 to 62.5, it really means that the length L is greater than or equal to 60, but it's less than 62.5, right? So that resolves the ambiguity. If something is 62.5, we'll actually consider in this interval, correct? Right. Right. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about box and whisker plot. And when we talk about that, we basically come across five critical points. Can you name these five points? Um, like the minimum value. Yes. The lower quartile, median, upper quartile, Correct. Um, maximum value. 
Correct. So the lowest data value, which I've referred to here as L, the highest data value H. Q1, Q2, and Q3 are the three quartiles. Now, when I say Q1, it basically divides the whole data into first quarter. This is your first quarter. Do you see that? That is your first quarter. Q1 to Q2 is your second quarter. Q2 to Q3 is your third, and this is your fourth quarter. So it actually divides the data in four equal parts. The data is divided into four equal parts. Now, lowest and highest datum points are the extreme values, which we are saying L and H in this particular case. Clearly, you can see that if I say that I have a frequency of one, that means one fish had a length between 60 to 62.5. I'm not sure what is the length of this fish, correct? And therefore, right. yeah. there is an ambiguity to write down the value for L. And that's why we normally will use the word estimate. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Now, you, one could estimate 60 as the lowest values to be on the safe side. Or you could say, well, there's only one. We will actually take the mean of the two. Do you see that? So center value to be like uh, assuming that the data is uniformly distributed. So our assumption will be uniform distribution of data. Like between each class interval? Yes. Oh, OK. So if I use this uniform distribution of data, if there's only one point, I will assume that to be right in the center, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. so, so that gives me the value for L, which will be correct because my assumption is uniform distribution of data. Right. So when you have a logic for finding your values, because here we are estimating, for every estimate, you have to provide a logic. So that helps. So the center value, you can add them and divide by two so and get the value, correct? So that is how we'll find mm -hmm. L. Now, how do we find first quartile? First quartile means number of data elements, we'll just count them all. Frequencies are given to us. Sum of all this for us is 80. Since the total number is 80, for the quartile, first quartile, we'll divide 80 by 4. We get 20, right? So in this yeah. case, for Q1, we get a value, which is 20. Now, 20 happens to be where? This is what we need to figure out. So we'll actually write cumulative frequency here, saying that one fish is less than 62.5. However, there are nine which are less than 65. And when you add like this, you get to complete the cumulative frequency column. Correct? So keep on adding. Yeah. And then once you do that, you will get the values here for cumulative frequency. Right? Nine plus 15 gives you 24. And when we are saying that Q1 lies in this group, so we are sure that it is within this interval. Is that clear to you? Yeah. But we don't know exactly where it is. Right. Between 65 to 67.5, we do have Q1, right? This will give you Q1. But we don't know which one is this. So today we are going to learn this technique and also derive a formula of finding the exact value of Q1. I should say exact since exact estimate, I should say, right? So, oh, okay. yeah. right? So estimate. And our assumption again is uniform distribution, correct? <clears throat> so now, yeah. first let us understand what is uniform distribution and how are we going to apply uniform distribution to estimate a number? And then, We'll right. extend this okay. concept to all our examples. So here is a question for you. There are 16 data elements in the interval 50 to 60. So let's say we have an interval here between 50 to 60. It really means that the lowest is 50 and the highest is 60, correct? And within this yeah. interval, we have 16 data elements, right? But they are uniformly distributed. You said, you see, like I said, these are 16 points. These points are equally spaced out within 50 to 60. That is what we mean. So these are, for us, 16 points. 
Is that clear to you? So when I say yeah. it has a uniform distribution, it means that this whole interval, which is of length 10, is actually divided between 16 points. Oh, yeah. And that means each point is 0 0.625 apart. So from 50, the first point will be 0 0.625 apart. You get the idea because they are uniformly distributed. Yeah. Correct. So we are now interested in finding the value of sixth data element. So how will you find sixth data element? Will be six times 0 0.625 from 50. Do you see that? Yeah. So oh. that will be your sixth data element. So that is how. Using the concept of uniform distribution, we can find appropriate value for our estimate. Is that clear to you? Right. Yeah. So I'd like That's you clear. to read from here. Yes. 16 points distributed uniformly within the interval 50 to 60. Yeah. Minimum value is 50 and maximum value is 60. Within the interval of 10, we have 16 data elements. Therefore, each will be 10 over 16, like 0 0.625 apart. The sixth data element will therefore be 50 plus 0 0.625 times six, which is 53.75. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Correct. This is the concept which we are going to use. And now let us apply this concept to find Q1, Q2, and Q3. Back to the data. So we have now added the frequencies and created cumulative frequency column. So one fish is less than 62.5 centimeter length. These units are in centimeters as shown here. Nine less than 65, 24 less than 67.5, 57 less than 70, 76 less than 72.5, and 80 less than 75. That is the data which we have. Q1 really means one fourth. It divides the whole interval into first quarter. That is Q1. So n is 80 for us. The total number of elements in this particular case divided by four gives you 20. Now, where will this 20 lie? Clearly, 20 lies in the interval 65 to 67.5. So Q1 is a value within this particular interval. Now, you will also <laughs> notice that there are 9 already before 20. That means 9 plus 11 is 20. The 20th term within this interval is actually 11th in the interval, right? 20 minus 9 is 11. Yeah. So we are looking for the 11th term within the interval 65 to 67.5. Do you get this idea? Oh, because you did 20 minus, yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 right. minus 9. So within this right. interval, we are now looking for the 11th term. Our assumption yeah. is uniform distribution. Interval is of 2.5. Therefore, each point is 2.5 divided by 15 apart. 11th term will be times 11. You get 1.83. And therefore, this point Q1 should be 1.83 away from 65. When you add, you get 66.8 as your answer. Oh. Do you see how we got fairly accurate estimate? Yeah. Please go. We did a complete this. different method at school. Yes. No but one this, one, this one makes sense. No. But no this one makes like sense it. and it's clear. Yes. Mm. And that is why I have my videos on this topic are very popular. So will you mind uh -huh. reading it once again so that you really get it and we'll repeat yeah. this process yeah. for Q2 and Q3. Yes, please. Q1. Q1. Read from here. Q1 is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Q1 is a value at um, quarter times n. So n being like the total of the frequency, yeah. Um, so a quarter of 80 in this case is 20. The value of the 20th term, yeah. So is in that interval between 65 to 
Um, but we need the 11th term because you do 20 minus 9. Yes. You have to assume that the uniform distribution of 15, so it is uniformly distributed um, of 15 and each, it is each 2.5 apart. Yes. So the total interval of 2.5 starting from 65 to 67.5 has 15 elements, correct? And these are distributed right. uniformly. That is what we are seeing. Since this space is 2.5, each element is 2.5 divided by 15. Right. And the 11th will be times 11. And we get the value 1.83. So Q1 is 1.83 more than 65, the lowest value in this interval. That gives us the value of Q1 as 66.8. Do you get it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, okay. we are going to apply the same logic to find Q2. Q2 is midway, half of 80, which is 40. Now, 40 lies where? Well, 40 lies in the interval 67.5 to 70, because that makes it 57. So 40 will lie within this interval. So this is for 40, right? Now, yeah. already 24 elements are there. So 40th will be what? We'll do 40 minus 24 and we get 16. So now we are looking for 16th position value in the interval 67.5 to 70. All these 16 are equally distributed within the interval of 2.5. So we are going to multiply 2.5 over 33 by 16, since there are 33 elements within this interval. And we want to figure out which one is the 16th. So once you do 2.5 divided by 33 times 16, you mm -hmm. get a value, which is 1.83. So it is 1.83 more than the lowest limit of 67.5. When you add that, you get 68.7 as your value of Q2, the median. That's clear. Yeah. Absolutely clear. Can you now find yeah, making what sense. is Q3? Okay. So we know Q3, since it being the upper quartile, you have is three quarters of the way in the um, through the data. So you do three quarters of 80, which is 60. Um, the 60th term lies in the interval between 70 to 72.5. Got it. Um, since 57 is already like taken, yeah. you Got do it. 60. No. So 60 is three more than 60. 57. Yeah. So you do 60 minus 57, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you get the third term. So that's the third interval. That's what we want to find. Yes. Um, then we know it's uniformly distributed. So between this, um, the, the distance between 70 to 72.5 is 2.5. You divide it by 19 because that's the frequency in that interval. Okay. And then you times it by three, you get 0 0.4. And then you add that to 70. The lowest value. Because that's the lower bound. Yeah. And get the value of Q3 as 70.4. Done. Do you see how the process works? Hmm. So once again. Never once seen again. it like this. Yes. Yeah. So that is the beauty of this process. It gives you exact values. Okay. I should Does say. Does other as countries as, do it like this? In or India, it, we used to do that. Like oh, for IB right. course, okay. for IB curriculum in Canada, we are doing like this. We estimate like this for oh. IB curriculum in Canada. Yes. All right. So. If you now want to make a formula from here, how can you actually yeah. make a formula? You can see that the interval portion is being divided by the frequency within that interval, correct? Multiplied by the difference between the quartile number and the cumulative frequency before that class interval. Right. And the value gets added mm -hmm. to the lowest term, correct? So this process, yeah. we are going to put in a formula. And here is your formula. So we are saying to find any quartile, whether it is Q1, Q2, or Q3, let me write this as Qn. We are looking for a position. And we are saying at that position is n divided by capital N, which is in our case 80, 
divided by small n, which could be one, two, or three. Right. right? Depending on uh, whether the quartile is the first quartile, second quartile, or third quartile. Is that clear to you? So if you are trying to yeah. find what Q1 is, then we are looking into the value and divided by four. Uh, I mean, uh, four, right? Sorry. Uh, this value, quartile is four, right? Four, two, or three by four, correct? So these are the three values which we are taking as N. First quartile, second quartile means quarter, right? Four. So when I have to find what Q1 is, I'm going to look at the number n by four, which in our case is 20 as we did earlier, correct? When we're looking yes. into Q2, we are going to divide it by two. And when I divide 80 by two, I get 40. And for third quartile, it is three over four. We're looking into 60, correct? Those are the numbers which we are interested in. So let's look into 20, which falls into the class interval of 65 to 67.5, as we just did. Now look at the formula. In the formula, L really means the lower limit of this class interval, which is 65. You get the point? Yeah. L is the lower limit of this class interval. N over 2 is the number 20, which we are looking for. In the whole data, it is the 20th item which we are interested in. We are taking away 9, which were previously there. So 20 minus 9 is the position within the interval we are looking into. Now this interval has a length of 2.5. And in this length of 2.5, we have 15 elements. Let me change this color. We have 15 elements. So we should divide that by 15. We get our formula. The formula is yeah. the lowest limit of the class interval L plus n by n, small n, depending on which quartile, minus the cumulative frequency before it, divided by the frequency of the class times the interval of the class. Got That's it? really clear, yeah. So yeah. that is the formula which we are going to use to find median, to find the first quartile, and to find the third quartile. Um, I hope yeah. you my, my way. how we derived at this position. Yeah. So clearly, Q1 is uh, 65 plus 20 minus 9 divided by 15 times 2.5. It gives you exactly what we derived earlier, the value of 66.8. Yeah. Now Q2 is n by 2 is 40. We're looking for 40. 40 happens to be within the class interval, which is 67.5 to 70. So definitely, it is within this more than 67.5. How much more? 40 minus 24, because 24 is before it, frequency, cumulative frequency, right? Divided by total number of elements, 33 times the interval, 2.5. We'll add this term to 67.5 to get our value, which comes to 68.7, just as we did earlier. You got the idea. So therefore, you see yeah. that this formula- And you can always just check. Yes, and this formula is working for all- Because it's in the interval, yeah. After all, Q1 is also a median right. of an interval, lower half. Q1 is the median of the lower yeah. half of the data. Q3 is median of the upper half of the data. And Q2 is the median of the whole data. So it's the same oh. form, which you are going to use for all the three. You get the idea? I didn't realize Q1 and Q3 were medians. They are medians. <laughs> now it makes lower. sense. Yeah, the lower half, the upper half. Yes. Yeah. So basically, you have this data, correct? Within this data, yeah. the center position is Q2, right? That gives you lower half and the upper half. And the values All right. which we are looking into are Q1 and Q3. These are medians of lower half and upper half. And that is why mm -hmm. we are saying that it divides into four equal parts. Does that make sense? All uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we are yeah. taking the median of the lower half, the upper half, and the whole group as such to find the values of Q1, Q2, and 3. So Q3 is three quarters of the total number of elements, which is 60, and three quarters is 60, right? And 60 happens to yeah. be within the interval 
right? So we'll just plug in 60 as what we are interested in. 75 is the cumulative frequency, which is previous one, right? Times mm -hmm. the interval of 2.5 divided by 19, the frequency of this particular interval, and we'll add to the lowest value of this class interval 70 to get our answer, which is calculated as 70.4. Is that clear to you? Yep. So that I like is this how, method. Yeah, that is how we find nearly yeah. accurate, I should say, on the assumption that they are equally distributed, right? Because you know, this point, if it is not equally distributed, it could be anywhere, right? It could be at 60, 61, 62, who knows? Right. Where. But we have to assume yeah. something, correct? So that's the whole data. Now right. we got the three critical points to actually draw box and whisker. We need to find two more. And these are the lowest data and the highest, right? To be on safe side, one could say lowest is 60 and the highest is 75. That could be a very mm -hmm. safe assumption. Now also remember that we are actually rounding our numbers. And when we say that we are looking into the interval 72.5 to 75, our data is less than 75, not equal to 75. But if it is 74.9, it will be rounded to 75. So we could actually assume 75 yeah. to your highest value. Does make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Now let us have a logic for finding the lowest and the highest data elements. Correct. We have realized one thing that the formula L plus N over small n minus the cumulative frequency of the previous class interval divided by the frequency of our interval times the uh, length, class length i gives you the value of median, whether it is the median of the lower half, the upper half, or the whole data, correct? This we calculated on the assumption that points are uniformly distributed. And we got the values of Q1, Q2, and Q3 as 66.8, 68.7, and 70.4. So basically, we have these three values, Q1, Q2, and Q3 for us. So we have just shown these values, however, we have a difficulty of figuring out what is the lowest and the highest value. Now, based on this assumption, we'll look into the first interval, 60 to 62.5. There is only one element there. It could be at 60 also. I'm not saying it won't be there. But since we are assuming that they are uniformly distributed, I will assume this to be right in the center, the mid value. So the average of 60 and 62.5 will become my lowest data elements, and that is 61.25. This is actually 61.25. I'm rounding it to 61.3. Is that clear to you? Since I'm yeah. adding all the values to one decimal place. Okay. All right. So I rounded okay. to 61.3, yeah. and that gives me the lowest value, 61.3, as mentioned here. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. let's look for the highest yeah. value. The highest value, we have four elements. We have four elements which are distributed from 72.5 to 75. Since they're equally distributed, so 2.5 divided by 4 times 4 will give you 2.5, right? 2.5 divided by 4 times 4 will give you 2.5. And when I add 72.5 with 2.5, I do get a value which is 75. So in this case, I will assume 75 uh, to be my highest element on the assumption that they are equally distributed. You get my point? Yeah. And therefore, I have now my box and whisker plot with the lowest data element at 61.3, Q1 66.8, Q2 68.7, Q3 70.4, and H highest element 75. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, that, so for a that's so clear. This method and the formula, which is given right there, can really mm. help to solve questions. Quickly. Quickly. And also explain, and your estimates, explain your estimates in case there is an ambiguity. You understand, because oh, always people right. are offering different methods of solving. They will come up with different estimates, but you can justify your thought and estimate. You get the idea. Um, that is the whole beauty of it. Yeah. There is no right or wrong answer in this. Let, let's be very clear about it. But as far as we are concerned, this method could be adopted and 
we could come to this result, which is fairly accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, can you summarize what we have learned today? Yeah, so um, today's lesson was more about um, drawing box and whisker um, diagrams uh, with grouped data, uh, mainly, because um, those are the tricky ones, like the discrete data, you know, when it's like all listed, those are kind of straightforward when trying to find um, the quartiles and stuff. But with the box plots, uh, with sorry, the group data, it's kind of um, tricky because uh, you've got these class intervals. Um, so with these class intervals, you have to assume that all the data is um, uniformly distributed within each interval. Um, and yeah, and then so when you do this, uh, I did a method and it took, it, you get to the answer, but it takes too long. Um, so uh, Mr. Kumar came up with this formula. That's really good. Um, it's actually really straightforward to, yeah, oh, it was there. So um, quite simple, really. Uh, we kind of discussed it when we went through the different quartiles, but um, always drawing the cumulative frequency, um, adding another column to the diagram that's given is uh, very critical because you don't want to make like silly errors when um, adding the values together. So uh, that's quite important. And then it's quite simple. You literally just sub in the values into the formula as discussed and um, you would actually get your answer and quickly. And yeah. then after you do all of that, um, maybe like I said, write a statement afterwards, just justifying how you got there um, because there is no right or wrong as this whole concept and stats is all about estimating and estimates. So um, as long as you can justify your answer, uh, it'll, be your, it'll be correct. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. So that's nice. You have understood this, Emmy. We'll actually end today's class on this. Uh, and after the class, we'll have further discussion on your questions uh, on the related topics. Perfect. So uh, I hope it really helped. So let's. Uh, yes, it did. It did. Oh, that's great. But this is the yeah, most. It did. Critical, <laughs> actually speaking, this is the most critical part of uh, box and whisker and all medians and all what you're studying and least understood by the students. So if you have understood this portion, yeah. it's a great deal which we have done accomplished today. Um, so that's great. In mm. case you have any difficulties, you can always share with me, send those questions over, correct? So now we'll end the class here. And I hope uh, you are able to do most of the questions from your textbook, correct? I'll send you, yeah, if I have any difficulties. So yeah, I'm gonna go attempting all the questions in my book now with your formula and see how quickly I can do it and um, if I'm getting the right answer as well. So yeah, thank you, sir. I really okay, appreciate it.